Welcome to chapter 17 and we're going to talk about economic policy making. This is huge for any uh, elected official trying to go into politics or maintain their, their position in politics as the economy can be a huge indicator of um, whether they get reelected or elected at all. Uh, economics is something that impacts not just politicians but impacts our daily lives as well. You know, essentially the question, are you going to have a job? Um, when talking about economic policy, we're going to touch on several factors, um, but one must have a very basic understanding of the difference between monetary policy and fiscal policy. Monetary policy refers to the money supply that exists, which is controlled by the Fed. Uh, the Fed are appointed officials. They are appointed by politicians that are currently serving in the uh, administration for the executive branch pretty much the president. Uh, fiscal policy relates to those members that are elected to office, the president and Congress, and fiscal policy relates to the idea of how the government taxes and spends its money. Uh, question to ask yourself, does the difference between appointed and elected officials uh, impact our nation's economic policies? That's a big question to consider. One must also have a basic understanding since this is United States uh, government and politics. We're going to focus on capitalism, the idea that individual corporations are basically trying to con uh, seek a profit by controlling the principal means of production. We function on a mixed economy with capitalism, uh, capitalist undertones. In a mixed economy, the government is deeply involved in economic decisions such as a regulator, a consumer, a subsidizer, a taxer, an employer, and a borrower. And we're going to look at examples of each of those as well. Uh, multinational corporations, uh, we have a lot of those where you have corporations that have vast holdings in many countries. Um, they can go overseas and operate there as well as bring their products back because if you go overseas a lot of times the wages can be cheaper um, and companies or corporations can produce or manufacture goods at a much more cheap, uh, at a much cheaper rate. Uh, one of those prime multinational corporations would be Walmart. Uh, they're the world's third largest company um, with billions and billions of dollars in revenue. Uh, they have very low prices because they're able to negotiate with their suppliers uh, for lower rates on items for their supplies basically and to um, provide lower wages. Uh, in, Wal uh, in the United States, Walmart has been able to help keep the inflation rate low through their own private economic policies that can have a big impact on the nation's economy. When we talk about the government as a regulator, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission is part of the bureaucracy. They are a bureaucratic agency. They regulate the stock market. They are an independent regulatory commission. Uh, they set the rules. They set um, the guidelines for the stock market. Uh, <clears throat> They force corporations to make sure that annual revenue reports are reported to their stockholders as well as everybody that is impacted by them, in essence, the general public. Um, so buyers of Walmart stock are entitled to accurate knowledge from the company. Um, the SEC is there to make sure that corporations like Walmart follow those guidelines. Uh, they do this through auditing them um, and checking their records. Uh, Walmart, um, like every other corporation, is held to a minimum wage policy that is set by the government. This would be a price f floor, if I've got that right, meaning that Walmart as a corporation cannot pay their workers less than the federal minimum wage, which is $7.25 an hour, which um, is changing, uh, and we can discuss that later. Um, you can always check the Department of Labor for current or past minimum wage numbers. Uh, and I apologize, this 725 an hour is as of 2010. In the United States, we allow labor unions to exist. And if you go back to 1935, when the National Labor Relations Board was created, um, a labor union is an organization of the workers intended to engage in collective bargaining. Basically, labor unions were designed to protect workers uh, from poor working conditions and pay that was not sufficient to sustain 
uh, financial independence. Uh, the collective bargaining uh, piece is how labor union representatives and management uh, will negotiate uh, their pay, the workers pay, and acceptable working conditions. So essentially the idea that we won't go back to work until management um, agrees to our demands. If this is going to have a huge impact on the economy, the federal government will step in. Um, but a lot of times with the threat of the federal government stepping in, uh, management and labor union reps will work out or negotiate uh, a deal for the contract. Uh, the economic policies at work that exist in Walmart. Um, Walmart workers are protected by regulations governing worker safety and hiring. Um, as well as other employment policies, uh, but Walmart does discourage workers from joining unions. Um, because they do that, um, they try to meet federal uh, regulation guidelines when it comes to worker pay and um, whatnot. Uh, this is all governed by OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, uh, which is another, another um, government bureaucratic agency that regulates um, worker safety as well as uh, helps with regulating pay. Uh, Walmart cannot discriminate on the basis of sex, race, or age in hiring, firing, and promotions. Uh, workers will stand up for themselves when pushed too far. Um, back in the early years of 2000, workers um, through labor unions decided a marketing ploy to force management to provide better better health care to full-time workers at Walmart um, and as you can tell in this picture if you were to drive up to Walmart and see that it was quarantined um, without reading the fine print at the bottom of the sign uh, a lot of customers would leave uh, because Walmart outsources to other countries uh, most of the merchandise in Walmart comes from other countries um, because it can be made more cheaply. Uh, the wages they pay those workers in other countries is incredibly low, so the profit that they make off of those manufactured goods is even higher than what it would be if those products were produced here. Uh, in 2002, Walmart is estimated to have imported $12 billion or more in goods from China, which is one-tenth of China's total exports for the U.S. in 2002. Um, so you can imagine that China gets a lot of its business from exporting for Walmart. Um, Walmart has also, because of their low costs on their, their products and their goods, they've been able, they've forced other companies to outsource or send their factories overseas. Um, this is something, this is a chart that you can look at when it comes to workers' compensation. Workers' compensation is provided to help workers when they get hurt on the job. Um, and if you look, the United States spends far more money. Um, in workers' compensation benefits than any other country around the world. One thing to look at um, is how Democrats and Republicans differ in their view of the economy and how the government should step in and play a role or whether they shouldn't. Um, Bill Clinton back in 1992 ran a very successful campaign against uh, George W. Bush um, and his one of his big platform planks was, um, quote unquote, it's the economy stupid, which was devised by his political strategist, James Carville, um, basically saying that you really have to focus on the economy and that's what our big problem is right now. Um, like it says on the slide, economic conditions are the best single predictors of voters' evaluation of the president. Um, so basically, if you are out of work, um, you're gonna blame it on the president. If gas prices are too high, you're gonna blame it on the president. If prices for groceries are too high, we're going to blame it on the president. But when all of those things revert and unemployment numbers are very, very low, people are back to work, uh, gas prices are low, grocery prices are low, we're going to thank the president. One thing to look at um, specifically is the unemployment rate. Um, unemployment is the proportion of the labor force that is actually seeking work but, able to, but unable to find jobs. You are unemployed if you are out of work but actively looking for a job. Um, this number is actually determined by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Uh, they're the ones that determine or count the unemployment rate. Um, 
the higher the unemployment rate, uh, the worse we see our economy doing. One question to consider here is, does the unemployment rate differ among geographic areas across the country and age groups? And definitely it does. Here is a nice lovely graph that shows us the unemployment rates by age and race and ethnicity during the recession. And we're looking at 2009. Another question to consider is, should we raise or lower the minimum wage? Another statistic or economic indicator is the underemployment rate. Um, this is a statistic that includes the unemployed, discouraged workers, and people who are working part-time that cannot find full-time work. So if you're working at McDonald's and you're only working 20 hours a week, that's not enough to sustain a living, but you are employed, you are considered to be underemployed. Uh, in July of 2010, the national unemployment rate was 9.5%, and the underemployment rate was 16.5%. If we look at other economic indicators, these are terms you should know from economics. The inflation rate, which is a rise in the price of goods and services. For example, you go to buy a soda out of the vending machine. They used to be 75 cents a bottle. Now they're $1.25 or $1.50 inflation folks the consumer price index is a key measure of inflation and this is the change in the cost of buying a fixed basket of goods and services the annual inflation rate in the united states has consistently been below four percent and one thing to consider is uh the goal of the consumer price index is to reflect changes over time in the amount consumers need to spend to achieve a certain standard of living uh, there are three periods of sharp inflation. Uh, the first one in U.S. history, the first one is 1973 to 74, where Arab oil producing nations uh, cut the U.S. supply because of the U.S. support for Israel. In 1979, the Iranian Revolution had an impact, as well as 1991, when Iraq was invaded by Kuwait. I'm sorry, when Iraq invaded Kuwait. What a slip. I'm going to stop here. Um, your job is to continue with the Nearpod um, assignment. There's more to these slides. Um, there are activities for you to complete and terms for you to um, consider as well as their definitions. Thank you, and I will see you in the next episode.